Save Our Streams also includes chemical monitoring, which is another way that volunteers can test the quality of the water. For most of your chemical tests, the first thing you're going to do is collect a sample of water from the stream that you're going to use to run the tests. And we need to make sure that this is a clean sample. So the first thing we're going to do is rinse out your vial. We're going to take our sample from the middle of the stream. And you always want to make sure when you're monitoring that you start from the downstream and work your way up so that you're not disturbing your site before you take your sample. We're going to rinse out our sample vial three times by filling it with the stream water and pouring it out. And we do that so that we make sure that we're actually testing the water in the stream and not the tap water that you might have used to clean your vial in between samplings. You want to make sure that you fill it all the way to the top and you don't have any air bubbles in there. And if you're trying to get to a certain number of milliliters, you can just flick the water off to get to that point. We're going to measure chloride. And we have our sample of stream water. And this is our chloride test strip. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this strip in the water and it's going to take a few minutes. We want to wait until the reaction has happened. And you'll know that that's finished when this yellow line at the top is completely covered with black. Chloride is a measurement of salts in the water. This is an especially helpful test to do in the winter time as road salt is being applied to see what kind of impacts that might have on your stream. Salts are extremely toxic to aquatic life. So now we're going to take our chloride reading. As you can see, the top stripe is completely black now. And then what you want to look for is there's a light colored mountain that is coming up on this darker colored strip. And so what we want to do is look at where is, where is the top of that light color, and we're going to read the number across. So each of the lines on this strip is 0.2. So what we have here is a reading of 4.8. And then what we'll do is look on the bottle of your chloride sample and you can convert your 4.8 to 221 parts per million of chloride. Now we're going to measure dissolved oxygen. This is a very important measurement because all of our aquatic life need to get their oxygen from the water. So what we're going to do is you take your clean sample of stream water and you have an ampule and we're going to break this ampule in the water sample and to do that it's very narrow up at the end and so all you need to do is put that narrow end all the way in the bottom of your sample and you want to push it against the side until you hear it crack. And at this point, you have water that has gone up into your ampule, and you just want to turn it over, up, and down a few times to allow it to mix. And this is going to perform a chemical reaction that will change the color. And for this one, you want to time it for two minutes. So this is our color comparator that we're going to use to determine the color of the ampule. And after two minutes, we'll take this reading and you can move this around so you can see that it's definitely a lot darker than the ones on this end. I'm going to put it at between eight and 10. So let's call this an eight parts per million of dissolved oxygen.
With another clean sample from the stream, we're going to test nitrate and nitrite. We have a test strip that has two pads on it, and we're going to go ahead and just dip that in to the water and then hold it up to the pad on the bottle. The upper one is nitrate and the lower one is nitrite. We read the nitrite after 30 seconds and the nitrate after 60. And it's important to read them at exactly the time because the colors will keep changing and you want to make sure you get an accurate reading. It's at 30. Okay, so it looks like we have zero for the nitrite and we're still waiting for the nitrate. So these are both forms of nitrogen, which is a very common pollutant. It can come from things like fertilizers, sewage, um, any kind of organic matter. And if you have too much nitrogen in your stream, it can cause a lot of algae to grow. And when that algae dies, it decomposes and uses up all the oxygen. So at 60, we have a reading of one parts per million for our nitrate. Now we're going to measure phosphates, which is another common nutrient that you can find in streams. So we have our sample of 25 milliliters of stream water. And the first thing we're going to do is put in two drops of our activator solution. And then we're going to close that up and shake it to make sure that it's well mixed. Once your activator solution is thoroughly mixed into your sample, we're going to break our ampule in the sample. So again, just like with dissolved oxygen, we're going to hold this against the side and push it until that ampule breaks. And we'll also go ahead and turn it up and down to mix it. We want to time this reaction for two minutes to then get our reading of phosphate. If you have a lot of phosphate in your stream, the color change will be dramatic enough that you can use this type of color comparator. But as you can see, the comparison with our ampule, our ampule is very clear. So we actually have another comparator that we're going to use. This is our low range phosphate color comparator that we use for phosphate readings that are below one part per million. So you can see on the bottom, there are several ampules with the different colors that you can use to match your ampule. What you do is you go ahead and put it in with the pointy end up, and then you can hold it up and look from underneath to get your color comparison. We're also going to measure the pH of the stream. So with another clean sample of stream water, we're going to dip in our test strip. We're going to time it for 15 seconds. And we're going to read the color change on the bottle for our pH. And this is a measure of how acidic or basic the water is. And it looks like a seven, which is perfect. Seven is neutral. pH goes from a zero to 14 scale with seven in the middle. And that is exactly what you want for most stream life. It's important to test the water clarity. This shows us how much sediment is in the water. And that's important because too much sediment in your stream can smother your macroinvertebrates and fish eggs and can clog fish gills. 
So we are going to test the water clarity by filling up this tube. And what you want to do is slowly release the water while looking down inside because inside of this tube you have a black and white disc and what you want to do is lower the level of the water until you can clearly see the difference between the black and the white and then we're going to measure how many centimeters that is and that tells us what the water clarity is. So you can release your water and look down. And when you get to the level where you can see clearly, you go ahead and close that valve again and take your reading. It's important to look straight down the tube because it's going to look a lot different than looking from this side it's always going to look more clear from the side than straight down. We're also going to measure water temperature. And remember that the colder the water is, the more oxygen it holds. So the better that's going to be for your fish and bugs and other wildlife. You want to Hold your thermometer under the water and keep it in there for at least a minute so you give it time to get your reading. You also want to make sure that you read the temperature while the thermometer is still underwater because if you were to pull it up and take your reading, it's already starting to change because of the difference in the air temperature in the water. So you want to make sure that you keep it in that water until it's ready to get the reading. By monitoring water quality, you are providing valuable information about whether your streams are safe for fishing, swimming, or wading. You can share that information with your community and with local agencies by posting your data to our website. And we hope to see you out in the stream soon.